started with some pictures of projects we've done in the past. Chestnut Hill Farm, we paid for CPA funds, paid for um, conservation restriction on the property, which forever protected it. Now the trustees own it, and at least the town still has the conservation restriction, which ensures in perpetuity this property will stay fine. More recently, we did the preservation restriction at 84 Main Street, which, again, it's a little different instrument, but it preserves the historical assets of that property in perpetuity. This is that last town meeting. We purchased this beautiful property of over 30 acres, the Halloran property. Well, we authorized the purchase. I'm not sure if it's been closed on yet. That should be happening or happening soon. That's the Conservation Commission working on it. This is my title slide. So it's not June 28th, as you can tell. So more than that, it's um, August 9th. Yep. Good. So we're going to go through tonight what our committee membership is, what the history of the CPA in South Borough is, what our budget looks like, summary of approved projects, application process, key dates, and your questions, and then discussion. So here we have who's on the CPC, Community Preservation Commission. Open Space Preservation Commission, that would be myself. Planning Board is uh, Andrew Mills. Then we have Kate Madison, representing Historic Commission, over here. Dave Candell is not here yet. Conservation, Benjamin Smith is taking a well-deserved vacation. At large is Tim Martell. Nancy Morris could also not be with us tonight. She represents the Housing Authority. Um, we have an open seat for the Southboro Housing Opportunity Partnership Committee. Shops we have. And at large, we have Mark Murphy. And what I'd like to talk, go back to that side. Why this is important, you can see that our committee is made up of members representing very different boards and committees in town. So we have a very broad view and um, level of experience on all issues of CPA that we, um, so it's not one issue getting more attention than another. It's really well, well divided between the different interests. So what is the community preservation? This is a, somebody did this fancy. So it's a smart growth tool. It allows communities to preserve open space, historic sites, uh, create community housing, and develop outdoor recreational spaces. We also can help strengthen the state and local economies by expanding housing opportunities and construction jobs. It's really well um, appreciated by the state overall. Tourism industry, uh, tourism industry through what we preserve here makes this town more beautiful in the future where people might want to come and stay in the new B&B that is supposed to be um, at some point opening at the historic 84 Main Street and then they may wish to go to the Chestnut Hill Farm and see the goats. I mean, it, it just does a lot for the community. Play golf. And play golf. Oh, how did I forget? Again, the <laughs> oldest golf course in the country, we believe, um, which we preserved the last town meeting. So we passed this in 2003. We started collecting money in 2003. Our committee wasn't set up till 2004 because we had to wait a year to go back to town meeting to establish us. And then after we were established, it took us a year to create a plan before the next town meeting where we could actually start to spend monies, and at that first year, I believe we spent almost all the money we had at the time on uh, the Chestnut, not all of it, but all that was available to be bonded on the Chestnut Hill Farm uh, in that first year. So what are our, the committee's obligations? We develop a plan, we create the application, then we review the projects that come in, and we hold this annual public forum, and we present a town meeting, because that's not there. So how much does it cost the homeowner in Southboro? And there's some misconceptions about this. It's a 1% surcharge. It's not a 1% tax. 
how it works is here's um, you figure out what your home is assessed at. The average home is at 596 800 There's a $100,000 deduction. So the price you're, um, the surcharge is on is for the average home is 496 800 Then you take our tax rate for 1000 multiply it, and you come up with $8,018. So the 1% surcharge equals $80.18 for the average home. And there are exemptions for seniors and low income residents. And you can find those on the town assessor's website. So what do we do when we start our process in the fall? First, we have to estimate how much revenue we're going to have. And we get that from the town treasurer and the town accountant weighs in. And then we have to take 10% of each of those amounts and put them into the buckets for the designated uses of the community preservation. This is required by law. So each of these gets 10%. Open space, historic preservation, community housing, administration for the committee is 5%. And then the remainder goes into an undesignated reserve that can be used on any project. So recreation doesn't have a bucket. They weren't originally part of the Community Preservation Act, but we can fund projects under recreation. They just can't come out of any of the other buckets, so they don't get a 10% set aside. But this committee has worked really hard, and we believe we've done very well by the recreation um, needs in the town. So. So, this was last year's annual budget for fiscal year 19. We estimated the surcharge. We estimated a, a state match. We came up with the total amount. We put the set-asides into each of the buckets. And then the, um, at town meeting, we took these amounts in the buckets, and that's what we uh, budgeted projects out of. I'm sorry, before town meeting, when we reviewed the applications, we decided which bucket and how much was coming out of each bucket for which project. So what happens is, and this is going back to 2017 because I don't have the numbers for July 1st, 2018. The books weren't closed when I was, uh, they closed on June 30th, but it takes a while for the accountant and I didn't have them then. So we went into last town meeting with no money in open space because we'd already spent it all on other projects. Community housing at 233,000. Right. Historic had 180,000. We had a budgeted reserve and general fund reserve. Both of those accounts can be used on any of the projects in addition to their, um, in addition to their specific buckets. And also we have $100,000 a year bond off the top. We're not sure exactly every year how much it will be. Last year it was over 100000 Originally we had been told it was going to be about 87000 And that's what we have um, obligated to pay off the preservation restriction of the 84 Main Street Burnett House. So, so how much have we collected? The local surcharge, we've received over three and a half million dollars. The state match is almost two million dollars. And the total funds collected in Southboro are over five million dollars. We have a surcharge that gets matched by the state. And last year we received 17.20% against the prior year fiscal 17 surcharge. I know this makes most people eyes roll, the, but there are other people who really care about this budgeting. This was last year. It shows what we got year to year, and I'd just like to show it because in the early years, we got a 100% match. And some people thought when it started going down, we weren't getting our fair share. We should still be getting 100%. And the reality is we've always gotten our fair share. When we voted it in, what we were promised is that there's money that's um, collected from deeds, goes into a, a fund, and then every year, the state matches all of the towns that have adopted the CPA by what's in the, what's in the, what's in the um, fund. 
So since we, we, we were one of the first towns that adopted this, we were an early adopter. So there was a lot of money in the account and not a lot of towns pulling out. So we got 100%. Then as more towns joined up and the money started dropping that was in the account, the money's gone down. Um, this doesn't have last year's, which was at 27%. We belong to a thing called the Community Preservation Coalition, and they work with us, and they are working with Beacon Hill. They're trying to stabilize the match and actually secure it at 35%. They haven't been successful yet, but as you can see, it went down to 26%, and then it went up to 52%. That's because they were able to get some extra funding from the state, and that's what they try to do every year. Their ultimate goal is to stabilize it permanently, so we're not seeing this kind of fluctuation. That's a long list, but um, one of the great ones is the Fayetteville Playground. I've heard, I think it had an early opening. It was a soft opening. Soft opening. <laughs> I guess that's the correct. There's a big one planned when during? August 18th. August 18th, there's a big planned opening for it, but your children can play there now. Um, I tried to put some pictures on, but I didn't do it. So. What I'm hearing from the parents who have been using it, it's fantastic. Everyone's really raving about it. It's a lot of fun. Um, last year we purchased the Halloran property. Um, we paid for um, a future redesign of the South Grove Golf Club because some of the holes need to be redesigned because there's now a public safety building being constructed on some of them. Um, the restoration of the old burial ground in back of um, the library. And is that the correct name, Kate? Uh -huh. Old Burial Ground? Yes. Okay. Very historic. And um, so you can see there's a lot of projects we've done. These aren't all of them, it's just a sample. So what's the application process? That's what you're probably here for. You're going to be able to obtain a plan and application form from southgrovecommunitypreservation.org, but not till Monday. But you can look at the plan ahead of time. You need to understand what the criteria is for funding a project. You need to complete and submit the application. We'll be setting a September deadline, and that will be on the website uh, Monday. Then you have to come in before the CPC and present your project. We'll ask questions. We might send you back to bring us more information, but um, I'm going to mention that this year we're going to be under a really tight deadline because they moved town meeting up till March. So the warrant articles are going to have to be done at least a month ahead of time, then right in the middle of the Christmas season. So I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be even tighter than, uh, way tighter than normal, but we may not even um, be aware of how tight that's going to be with the holidays. We'll talk about that later tonight. Um, and then, if it's approved to be forwarded to town meeting, you then are required to attend selectmen and the advisory committee meetings reviewing the project and answering any questions they may have. And then, at town meeting, you need to attend and be able to be available to answer questions and or maybe give a presentation. We try to keep the presentations only if necessary and also very short. I think actually now the town moderator has uh, given everyone a five minute max. But, okay. So here's an example of an old application. It doesn't change much. The look of it hopefully will change a little bit where there's not all that stuff up top. But you can look at an old application on the website if you want to. The requirements, what we ask of people, is not going to change from what's there. Be sure you ask, um, answer how much is requested, and separately, what's the total cost of the project. We always hope that they're not the same, that there's other sources of funding that your people, project proponents are looking for, other grants or fundraising got to check off which category it fits. And then you need to make sure that you fit that category. We'll go into that a little bit later. Project description, community support, eligibility. You have to know if it meets the requirements. 
and there's a chart we'll be going over later. But that's really important because if you don't meet the requirements, we can't fund it and you don't want to be wasting your time and energy putting forth a project that you can't fund. So this is the critical chart. And it tells you which projects can be funded. So in some categories, you can't do certain things. For open space, historic, and recreation, you can't support them, but housing can. And there's um, some new things that came up for recreation. That's OK. That's also in with the application, so that chart will be available so you can go to check it. And we want to know, if, like I um, addressed earlier, what funding sources are available in addition to us. Volunteer hours, those are good to put in because it makes children leveraging our money for a bigger project. If you have volunteers, their, their work is worth something. So that has a dollar amount and it shows we're not so, you're not just solely coming to CPA for the full amount. Maintenance, this is an important one, especially for selectmen and advisory. If you create a new project and there is maintenance required for that project after you're done and you leave, you build it, you create it, whatever, the project's done from CPA, but then the town is left often with an obligation to keep it up and maintain it. You're going to be asked, who's going to do that? Have you talked to the right people? Have they agreed to do it? Because the worst thing is somebody builds something and they say, oh yeah, Department of Public Works is going to um, provide maintenance over time, but no one spoke to the Department of Public Works. Likewise, any other department, facilities or what. You need to find out who would be doing the maintenance and we're going to be asking for um, proof or some sort of letter from whoever that would be. We need the schedule for the uh, project completion deadline or an estimate anyhow. We need to know when we're going to be done and when we're going to start, the timeline. All of the things in the application are important. I'm just pulling out a few that we you know, want to highlight a little bit more. And historic projects are a little trickier than any of the other ones because they can only be funded if they meet certain constraints as far as being um, documented as being historic. So here's a flow chart, you know, yes or no. You know, can you, can you fund a historic project? And on top of that, we, the committee, has to have, have to have documentation from the historical commission. And it's precise, and it um, will say, if they need to say it's either a historic resource of the town or not or it's on the state register. So if we don't have that documentation, we can't fund it. But then we also ask if they support the project. It's a two-step because one, is it historic? And then two, does that commission support the project? Because we always want to know, like with an open space project, does the Open Space Preservation Commission support it if they're not the ones putting it forth? If somebody comes forth with a recreation project, does the Recreation Commission support it? So we always ask that, but it doesn't determine the final outcome. If someone said no, this committee still reviews it. If someone says, you know, one of the boards or committee says, yes, they support it, we could still say, based on our criteria, based on what's in front of us, we're not going to support it this year. So we always ask, we want the buy-in from the relative boards and committees, but we don't have to follow their recommendation. We like to, and I don't know that we ever haven't, but that's that's within the um, committee's purview. So here are some of the other projects we funded, Boy Scout Eagle Project, South Union School Playground, and now do you have any questions on the presentation? So now we want to have if there's any ideas or things you want to find or you're looking for, you want to talk to us about formally, 
not going to be an application. So why don't you tell me your name and... Uh, my name is Andrew Zalem. Uh, I am a Boy Scout from Two Point South Grove. I'm going to also be a sophomore of Banco Regional High School this upcoming school year. Um, and today I am presenting my Eagle Scout project, uh, which will be to install 13 brand new flagpoles at the All Wars Memorial. And this is the main idea of my project. I have two parts, but this is really where all the expense is coming from. The second part of my project is simply just to power wash the memorial, but that has really no expense. I have all that material um, that's not going to funds. Um, so the flagpoles will be made of a galvanized steel. These will be homemade flagpoles I won't be purchasing for someone to install it. I won't be purchasing already a pre-made flagpole. I'll be making these flagpoles all by myself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase all the accessories that go into the flagpole. This includes the cleat uh, that ties like uh, you tie the rope onto, the truck which is on top of the flagpole, um, and I will buy everything that goes with that. Uh, I will be having the uh, piece on top, the truck, and the cleat welded onto the flagpole by Aspen Valley uh, Regional High School. They said, and they, they confirmed, that they'd be able to weld that for me. In addition, they'll be welding a coupling nut into the inside bottom of the flagpole. And I'll get into the reason for that later, um, and I'll explain that during my installation. Uh, the flagpoles will also be painted white by all car care. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, uh, but Rick was a, I talked to Rick and he was able to confirm that this is something he'll be able to do. We just included in the price. Uh, the size of these flagpoles are almost the exact same as what you see there. Um, the diameter of the poles are just slightly larger. So now I'm going to get into a little bit of the installation how I'd like to do that. Uh, so one of the biggest challenges I was faced uh, when the uh, veterans in South Road came to me and asked me to do this project was they didn't want these. I could have just came in here and I could have a little bit of concrete and I could have just permanently set these flagpoles in. But they requested these flagpoles be removable. So in the case that they need to repaint it, they don't want to have to do it on site. They want to be able to take it to the shop and do it there. So I was able to meet with an engineer. Um, and he, we conferred a little bit, and we came up with a really good design, uh, which would be to epoxy, which is like a concrete glue, um, a threaded rod into the into the holes that are in the granite slabs or in the memorial. Um, this will be five inches above the ground and 19 inches um, into the granite stone. And these would be very, very uh, durable. This is the only part of the memorial uh, flagpoles of perm. These would not be able to be removed. I don't see a way to pull those out. Um, then I would come in with the flagpole, and this is where the coupling that comes into place. I'll just be able to screw on the flagpoles right when I get there, and the flagpoles would be able to uh, sit right on that five inches of uh, threaded rod, one inch threaded rod, um, and be durable enough to sustain. The weather or anything like that. And I was able to confirm with the engineer that five inches may seem like not a lot for 13 feet, but he obviously has the uh, abilities to know that he's worked with thread rods before and he knows it's something he's capable of. So I have received uh, for this project uh, many approvals um, beside my troop committee. Uh, the directors of South Bro, uh, they've had a little bit of trouble getting this project done. Uh, I mean, two years back, they actually wanted to start looking into this project, and it's been up and down funding. They were able to find someone who would be able to work on this project. So, so they're kind of on edge, really want this project done. Uh, so I'm here to do that for them. Uh, I gave a presentation just in this room uh, about a couple months ago with the Board of Selectmen, and they unanimously approved the project. We were all for the project. Uh, I, one of the requirements for our project would be a building permit, and right now I'm just pending uh, the workers' comp exemption page because I actually uh, won't have obviously any employed workers. It'll all be volunteers, uh, either my troop or uh, some of the veterans who just want to come and take a look. So now the final part, which is the price breakdown. So I was able to receive a huge, huge donation, actually three donations. The first one is the galvanized poles. Um, without this donation, I can see the final price of this project being at least another grand and a half more than it is now. Galvanized poles, the thickness of the walls are very, very, uh, they're used to commonly plumbing, so the walls are very thick and they're very uh, durable, so it's very, very expensive. Uh, also, the epoxy was donated, the, the glue that I'll be using, that's another $300, $400 uh, donation. Uh, welding, I'm not exactly sure what the price of welding would be, but I'm assuming it's very, very expensive. And it was a very generous donation from Aspect to put their time into uh, welding the bowls for me. Um, and the, uh, the three parts that I'll need the funding for, which uh, may be expensive parts of the project, would be the 13 cleats, 13 halyards, uh, the trucks, the ornaments, the ornaments are a ball piece that goes on top of the flagpole, 
uh, and 26 uh, snaps that you put the flagpole, and that would cost $950 uh, in total right there. And then the threaded rods and coupling nuts, uh, that would be a total of $400. And I was able to talk to uh, Al Parker, I talked to Rick today. Um, he confirmed that he would be able to do all the painting. Uh, well, he don't need his time. Um, he would like me to pay for the paint, and that actual paint, uh, you can't directly just put on a white paint directly onto the, onto the galvanized steel, or else within, I'd say a couple of months, that paint would just start to chip off. So he had to purchase a glue that would first adhere to the paint, uh, so then you put multiple layers of paint onto all the poles. Uh, so that makes up the grand total that I'm asking for for $2,000. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very detailed and thorough application, and you're very well prepared to come in front of us. Not normally what we get at this present, you know, <laughs> this stage, but... Um, it bodes well. Yes, it says... Um, you tell your home. Yes. <laughs> and for the $2,000 price tag, you know, all the, um, that's what we were talking about, showing that you have other in-kind or other kinds of donations. Um, I'm going to ask Andrew if you have any comments for him. No, I get uh, I had a great presentation. Uh, it's great you've got a lot of support for it. Um, I can see that with your determination, it's going to get done. Um, the, the biggest question I have, I don't know, uh, can you go back to that grid of the, the chart? Uh, the chart. Uh, Next one. The one that okay. said where it fits into what that one. So the, this chart um, really helps narrow down where we're, you know, where we fit within CPA. So, um, you know, it's it is historic, right, money. So that's where we get into the. We're not allowed to fund like maintenance, right? Yeah. And we funded a few years back restoration of that site. So it, I don't think it really falls, personally, I don't know, that it would fall into the whole, like a restoration project. I mean, you're adding to it, you're, you're enhancing it, or improving the poles that are already there. Yeah, so the poles that are already, are already there, you could go over there right now, and you could just push those poles there. Uh, Mr. Wine, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. I mean, every, uh, every fall and every spring, he has to pull out those poles, uh, put them in his truck and drive them. I'm not exactly sure where he stores them, but he has to do that every single year. Uh, so with these new flag rules, he'd be able to just, those poles would be permanently there. You wouldn't have to worry about that. Right. Uh, so that's kind of like the new idea. Of, uh, so, so that's where I think we, we run into the quagmire of, you know, is how would this be considered? I mean, it's not really, it's not a full-blown restoration. Usually a restoration, you're doing multiple things, like we talked about you know, library. We're talking about the facade of the library. You're doing the steps, you know, a, a whole bunch of the whole front. It's not just the steps um, to get out of that, uh, that view of just um, maintenance. Yeah. So I, I, I struggle with how we make it fit and justify CPA funds at this time. Now you could call, we could call uh, downtown of Stewart, Stewart and the Community Preservation Coalition and see what he thinks because he's a good barometer where um, throughout the whole state people, you know, hang ideas off of him and he says, oh, you know, I saw something similar like this in you know, XYZ community and, you know, you really can't do that. Um, so we, we can check right, and everything, but that, that's, uh, I think, the biggest challenge from this committee, right. um, but from a funding. Do I think it's needed? Yeah, it sounds great. And like I said, it sounds like a, a great project for the town. It's just I don't know how um, viable it is for us to fund it because of that. I have a very tiny question. You said something about pressure washing. What you've been oh, I'm sorry. I was going to wash the memorial, the patio, and the benches. Right, and you do that very gently because you don't want to um, damage the ground. Yeah. Sometimes I, it's in bad 
shavings if that's why you have to do well, yeah. racial washing? Yeah, when I was there, I just saw a little bit of build up, a uh, little bit of mold, fungus, I don't know if sure what it was. But I just thought that it would be something else with her. Yeah, the other way of doing it might be to just do it by hand because um, avoiding pressure washing is usually the way you go with, to preserve something. But I, I don't know, I'd have to get into it more, but just keep that in mind. If there is, you could just get some solution that wasn't going to affect the grammar and use a yeah, yeah. cleaner. Was get all your mates to come and get them to help you. Kate, I would like to point out, is not only the Historical Commission's representative on our committee, but she is an expert on um, historic restoration, the, t the yeah. correct methods. I think you do a lot of action. Well, I, I'm, I just cognizant. I really don't know the answer to your question, but if you can avoid it, yeah. because it can damage stone. Yeah, I'll keep that. Um, for example, we're just doing the burial ground, and I'm meeting with, just, I'm sorry, if it is real, I'm meeting with um, preservationists there tomorrow, and I said, how are you going to clean them? And he, I'll, I'll speak to him about how he cleans them, because it might be relevant for you. Um, but, but he does it by hand. Okay. All right. I'll look the, the, the headstones. All right, I'll look at that picture. Right. Like all the like and all that stuff. Yeah. That on. So, Mark, do you have the current flagpoles? Do you know how long they've been there? Um, I think since 2003 or 2004. I, whenever they originally made the memorial, I believe that's when they put in the flagpoles. I didn't actually exactly talk to them about uh, how long they were there. Uh, all I know is that it's made of a conduit electrical pipe. Um, it's not really designed to be out there uh, as possible. And the email that you can and I can send you that information. Oh, so yes. Tim, did you have something? Um, did you have anything else, Kate? No. So, First, I wanted to say thank you for coming in front of us. I think I might have already said that, but, and. It's a great job. Yes, and it's a great project. And who doesn't love veterans, war memorial, and Boy Scouts? But this committee is um, required to make sure projects meet the, the requirements. Um, it's actually taxpayers' money, and it's overseen by the Department of Revenue. So we, we take our obligation very seriously. And part of it is like, it's such a wonderful project, you're getting so many things done, and the cost is $2,000. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you don't have to abide by the, the regulations. And I think contacting Stuart at the Community Preservation Coalition might be the best way to go. One of the things we run into with um, a historical project yeah. is we can't create new history and we bumped into it in the past. You can do a restoration of an existing historical, and restoration has specific defined terms of what, we, you know, what quantifies as restoration, but you can't make new things historical. So that's one of the things we've run into, and um, I guess my other question is, obviously because the veterans haven't done it, they don't have the funds to do it. You have support from the Board of Selectmen, and I'm wondering if we find out that this that we can't or we can't fund it. Is there um, an indication with that much support in a $2,000 project, is there a way the selectmen can find a way to fund it? Yeah, and, I actually talked about that. They said if I wasn't able to get someone to fund the project for me, I should just go back to them, contact them, and they'll find a way to uh, fund the project. Because Thanks. I think we can all agree this project should be done, and you're, you're, it's, you're, it's admirable that you've taken it on. And the level of work you've already done, and I got goosebumps here, it's like really, really well done. So, um, I can call Stuart and see if, 
me see if there's a roundabout way it can be incorporated into the, the flaw in the original restoration. If this is a fix. Except for the like that. The ongoing restoration Well, may I say something? Um what if we approach it in a way that he's not creating history, he's not creating the whole memorial. The memorial itself is already there. Right. We're just going here, we're just restoring a part of it, or I guess, you know, rehabbing it in order for it to continue existing. It's not, what if we approach it in a way that it's it's not an empty space where he's now creating this whole new veterans memorial. Do you see where I'm going? What if we approach it in a way it's like we're rehabbing an existing piece of history. We're making it be there for the generations to come. Because if it wasn't for him rehabbing it, those flagpoles may not be there this winter. You know, let Mr. Why not be there for another 100 years and be able to bring those poles into his truck. But as he said during the selectmen meeting, he said, I'm not getting any younger, and this work is really getting to me. So there may be one year that he doesn't bring the poles back, and now there's nobody there rehabbing it and making it better so that it is there in 50 years from now. Yeah, it's just, it, I'm just it gets, trying to. I, I, I agree, I agree with what you're it. saying. It's just, it and sounds a lot, it sounds a lot like me. Yeah. Well, and then the, and the CPC is not set up for yeah. maintenance. I'm just for, playing around. Right. Playing all right. So that's why I said let me talk to Stuart yeah, and see absolutely. if we can say hey, there was a flaw in our original rehab that we did, mm. and yeah. we want to fix it. So I have one final question for myself. Um, Main Street reconstruction is going to be happening, and is that going to impact your project or all, or have you talked to people? I've talked to people about it, and I've actually contacted people about the plans. Um, they said there's going to be no change in the actual memorial. Uh, because those grandstones are already part of the memorial, I'm not adding them into the memorial. Uh, I'll just, I'm putting my platforms into those stones. So we, they, they called that, I recall probably, um, they said there's going to be about a foot between the memorial and like the road, I believe, or some nature like that. Uh, but I believe there's going to be no change in so. Okay, so well, you had, uh, I, I believe the project finished with the granite stones in the ground. The flagpoles were not part of that project. Some of them already pre existed. They were around the flagpole before the line was completed. So it's a granite in the ground that was part of the original rehab of that memorial. And the black them. holes are going into granite in the ground. The granite is already yeah. in the ground with holes in the ground. And the flight holes pre existed. Correct. The problem we run into, we could run into, is yeah. putting new flag poles in those holes is not restoring the historic resource. The restoring the historic resource would be taking those original flag well, I understand, holes. I understand, but it's two separate things. That's not, which I agree with. This is so much better mm -hmm. what you're going to end up with and where the selectmen indicated that we can go back to them. There's not going to be, a, the first thing is, there's no difference in the timing if we can't do it versus if they can because it has to go to a town meeting. So. What I would recommend, Andrew's going to call the coalition, and we don't, this committee does not vote or review applications until they're in front of us, but you can email him and let him know what Stuart said, and that will give you an idea if you should fill out the application, because it's not, um, there's some tediousness to it, and why waste your time if you've got a good, usually if, if we ask Stuart and he says don't do it, we, we've never um, gone against that yet, so it's unlikely we would. And that way you'll know and be ready to you know, go back to the selectmen. 
but as I said, everyone here I think was very supportive. And uh, you know, if we could, if we can, we will. if we can, we will. I shouldn't say that we haven't had the application, but that's the you know, it's a good project. All right. Thank you. Take care. Great job. Yep. Thank you for coming. Have a nice day. You too. So, is the final slide up there, then? This is when we ask the people who are here if they have ideas on any of these categories or if you are also here for a project idea. Um, Barney, did you have any? On community housing, any project would require challenging approval. No. Any project would require an application and town meeting approval. Correct. From our thoughts. Okay. That's a different that's, that's done. So you're talking about the funds in our thoughts, correct. And it's based on committing ourselves to something. If Shopsy decides to go down the road, how far can we yeah. Other than what's in the trust fund, which we have access to. Well, or seven members have access to. There are some other funds that are in limbo because we had told, um, we communicated with the selectmen um, that they needed to let us know what their plans were before those right. got transferred. And that does not need to happen. But that needs a project that they're going to be spent on. Um, we're hoping that money doesn't just keep staying out there in the low for housing. So, I mean, that could be it. I'm just curious. And I see um, the library is well represented here tonight. <laughs> Amongst the boards of people. <laughs> and books. I'm sorry I was late to running a concurrent ballroom dancing program at the library, so I had to make sure I, um, that was all situated before coming over. So I I don't know if you want a brief update on the current status of our um, facade restoration assessment project. We um, pretty much have most of the final pieces of the engineering contracts. Um, I've been in communication with Mark Purple, and our OPM is going to be Central Mass Projects. Mary Bolso, who's attended CPC meetings with me before, um, really is Central Mass Projects. <laughs> so um, she couldn't be here tonight. She had a conflict. She'll be um, uh, attending future CPC meetings to provide an update. So basically, we're just, at this point, we're waiting to get um, Mary's insurance verification, and then um, we're pretty much ready to sign the contracts. So then we're hoping to do the assessment work as soon as possible. So at this point, no assessment work has actually been done, which means I do not have a amount to ask for for next year. So I have communicated this to Mary. I'm happy to come back to future CPC meetings. I'm hoping I can get this amount soon, and I could turn in an application, but I'm not going to meet, I think, the, the standard deadline that you guys have. So we may have to push this project out, not to FY20, but FY21, potentially. So we're hoping we can avoid that. But I came here tonight to talk to you and just let you know what the situation was, and then, you know, if there's some flexibility um, that can be built in here, you know, we can have a discussion, hopefully. Yeah, I, I, and I know you came late, and, um, but Freddie was talking about earlier is that we're concerned about the time frame with town meeting getting pumped Being up. Pushed up yes. So it, it's going to make it tight for us already. So I, I mean, we'll work with you. I, I'll say, from, from my perspective, you know, we'll work with you as much as we can, but our hands are going to be tied a little bit more. Yes, and so I mean, the benefit of pushing this out to FY twenty one would mean that. Right, presumably town meeting is also going to occur earlier in the year, um, so we would have, it, there would be kind of an elevated time frame. I'm concerned with doing this project correctly, 
and making sure that everything is being done that's supposed to be being done. So, you know, I'm not in a rush. I'll just say that. I'd like to see forward momentum on this project. You know, I'd really like to thank the facilities director, John Parent. You know, he spent pretty much an entire afternoon going over some of the engineering contracts um, that we sent into town council for review. Um, you know, he, I, I don't typically do engineering contracts as part of my job at the, at the library, um, so he, uh, it was very nice of him to sit down and really uh, help me out with this. You know, that has all occurred in the past, I would say, two and a half weeks. So I just got, um, town council had given us um, some feedback on updating the proposal from the architects who are going to be doing the assessment work. Um, they just sent me back the revised proposal today. I got that this afternoon. So, you know, I'm getting a little bit done, I would say, every couple days, but at this point we're still not ready to sign the contracts, which means I don't believe we're ready to submit an FY20 application to the CPC. So. I know that's disappointing, probably, for everybody in this room. More so for me. I've done a lot of work on this. Um, but again, in the spirit of doing this project correctly, and sort of the, you know, the quality that I want to see go into this work, I think it's important to make sure that we accurately do everything. I appreciate that. Mark, do you have any comments? Mm -hmm. Tim? No comments. Okay. I have a couple of questions. Sure. So last year you came to us with an application to do the work. Yes. And then you stepped back and said we want to have this assessment done. Correct. Which is going to feed you information on not just the price, but what needs to be done. Yes. The initial proposal was for, I believe, $400,000, somewhere in that ballpark, three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand. dollars $400,000. That was a big guesstimate. We had no idea how much this work was actually going to cost, which is why we scaled back to do an assessment project. We really need to um, look into the work that needs to be done. You know, presumably we think we could scale back. This could potentially be less money. Um, it could be more. We don't know. We need to have people get in there, do the assessment work, and tell us what we need in order to restore the brick work, restore some of the stone work um, on the libraries historical front. So that is the aim of, of the assessment. When you have the contract signed and the work started, do you have an idea of how long it would take? Probably pretty quickly. It would be within a two month time frame is what Mary and I are looking at. We're giving her until, um, we in the contract we have given her, um, I believe until early next year, just in case there's an unforeseen problem. And the idea was we're looking to push this out potentially to FY21. Again, because we know time, town meeting got pushed up, which was not something we were anticipating when we did the initial assessment task. Okay, one other question is, do you envision that the description of the work needed will change much based on the assessment? I can't answer that because I, I, we haven't had an assessment completed. I would say some of the targets we have, the stonework, the brick, um, you know, I have no idea how much those things cost to be. I'm not talking to cost, I'm talking about what needs to be done. Yeah, yeah I know. And I think what he's saying is that once they get in there, we're like, oh yeah, we could just restore the front of this, but really we have to do. You know, behind it, the reason why it's cracking is because water's coming behind. I mean, I'm making stuff up, but like that's when an expert gets in there and says, Well, you know, the roof has to get resealed or whatever so the water doesn't come in here, yeah, and that's what's really causing it. Yeah, I mean, that's you won't know until you get that assessment. But and to your you know, point, we've had water come in through where the historic part meets the, the 89. Um, sort of addition onto the building. So we're assuming there's elements of the roof there that do need to be looked at. You know, again, we don't know if it's an old problem with the building or if it's more of an 80s problem with the building, in which case it wouldn't be covered under a facade restoration construction project. We're only talking about the piece of the building that was built in 1911. So you need to be very clear on that's the only piece and it's only the restorative work. So again, I mean, we kind of have a scope of what the work is going to be, Freddie, but I, I can't tell you how much it costs. And in order to uh, put forth an application, I, I, 
we need an amount, correct? So I, I think that's where we're at right now. We just need to um, hear back from the assessment project. You know, I will, again, come to future meetings. I will update you as soon as I have the information and we have a presentation ready to go. So hopefully we'll be able to notify you guys um, earlier than the application process. I mean, it's very tight, right? It's, it's basically like, we have the money authorized, and I think we could start work on this really in July, because that was the new fiscal year, and the turnaround time to try to get it done, we, we knew that, I think, at the last CPC meeting when we talked about the project. So we we're aware that we may have had to push it out, which is. All right, so where I'm coming from is I hate to see this wait another year just because you're a couple of months, but we also aren't going to approve a project when you're not really sure what you're doing. However, if you get some better information by the time our application is due and you feel comfortable, you can give us, you can ask us if we'd be willing to accept a placeholder with some items to be filled in if you think you're going to have all the information by and we can set a date. Um, It's not going to be passed December 31st. No, I'm talking, I'm talking November. But he said their contract is going to go in. The in case they run into trouble, yeah. but if they're having, if it's going smoothly, and it's just yeah. one little I, thing. Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, just keep the open lines of communication. If we do know what we're doing, Freddie. We have a proposed scope of work. We don't know how much the work is going to cost, which is why we need the assessment done. So the cost is the is the sticking point here, I think. We know really what the targets are. It's the windows in the front, it's the stonework, and it's the brickwork in the front. Those are the primary things we're looking at. I mean, you know, there's a couple, you know, it's sort of like little things. There's, uh, uh, I believe, sort of those columns, if you, if you, right, if you have the front of the uh, library memorized like I do, there's the columns, and then there's grout work that's in between the columns when they first put them up, and that's completely wearing away. So that's like one of the smaller pieces we're looking at is, you know, can something be done for that to restore that? Um, and then we don't know. I mean, the assessment needs to determine if these are things that can be corrected or not corrected. Like, is it permanent or damage, right? So, you know, we have some targets that we want to look at, um, and we're hoping that all of them can be corrected. And then again, I will come back and I will give you a concrete amount. I'm hoping I can do that um, November, I think is a reasonable deadline to try to get you that information. I will do my best to complete it. I would say in the past three to four weeks, we've made a massive strides on this. And I'm very happy with the momentum that's being made. It says I don't have an amount to present to you tonight for the next application. Okay. Thank you. So when the project deadline, which we're set tonight, the application deadline, we'll expect some communication from you with a request for a placeholder, and then we can take it from there as it moves on to see if we can get this done this year. Or if it can become a project that we look to approve. We still look, have to to recommend. look to rec approve to go to town meeting. Excuse me, Freddie, do you have um, meetings through the fall already scheduled? We're doing that today. Okay. So I'll send, we'll put that on our website and I'll send that to you. We'll plan to attend one or more of those. Okay. The library is always happy to attend any meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. I gave up dancing for this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm happy to come over whenever you guys meet and, you know, as much as I can tell you about what we're doing with our current project, I will. Okay. Great. Thank you. Doreen, hmm. from Recreation, do you have any input tonight or? No. And we appreciate that Doreen offered to be our video photographer. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds good. And because Sam was busy elsewhere, probably at your dance. Well, no, I didn't see him there. <laughs> but uh, because there are people at home, even though this room is intact, there are people at home that will watch and want to know a little bit about the CPA funding process. So thank you for doing that. And if there's no other 
comments at this phase? Is there another slide? I don't want to miss anything. That's our website. And it will be updated hopefully by Monday. So I had one question just because there was something else on the agenda that I didn't know if you wanted to address or... Um, Where should I close this hearing? Oh, you want to close the hearing? Okay, sorry. So, it's well... Something else on your agenda after the hearing. Okay. The signage. That's what I want to talk to you about. Well, that's okay. Before you close the hearing, where would the application be found? Online? Where? Online. The where? link to our website should be on the town's page. So the Community Preservation Committee has its own website, which has not been well updated. We're trying to work to get it moved over to the town's. But some information is there. So if you go to the town's website and you look up the Community Preservation Committee, I'll be sure that on Monday there's a link to it and hopefully our application will be up there as well. But in the meantime, until that is put up, the 2018 application, it's not going to vary from any of the older ones that you might find online. You might want to ask Vanessa to put it on the front page of yeah. the town's news. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? All right, so I'm going to close this hearing of the public forum of the Community Preservation Committee. All in favor? Is there a motion? Motion. Sorry. Right. Motion by Andrew? Yeah, second. All in favor?